why would you do that? Because you can see my other camera. They need numbers in games as well, man, for the main. Yeah. Alright, hey, welcome everybody to the game lobby. Um, we are 30 minutes away from starting the finals between Eden and Blame Elias for third place. Two seconds, not so who's you controlling. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and as you can see, we're still figuring this out. We're improvising. We, we tried to make it look professional, but it certainly isn't yet. Um, so, while well, we set up everything, uh, we're going to talk about the teams, we've talked about some of the players. The, 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 the games something. anyway, I think, and just to be on the same side. We will um, also uh, have everybody introduce themselves, of course, and we'll see how it goes. And then, of course, most importantly, you get to watch all of the games, and that's what we are all about for today. All right, uh, let's, Mark McGee, let's start with you. Introduce yourself, and uh, feel, free to, feel free to have anything. Hi guys, I, I'm Mark G. Obviously, you might recognize me from Twitch already and from the previous battles already so far for CB Rivals. I, I play on EU1 myself and I'm part of the Immortals. Um, there's also a team that they've tried to get into here, but we're a bit too late, but we'll hopefully be in for the next time run. Might even get to take part myself. You never know. There you go, there you go. Tourna tournament aspirations already. Nice, I like it. All right, nine fingers, <laughs> on to you then. <laughs> Uh, evening, boys. Uh, I'm I'm a bit distracted at the minute. <laughs> as, as, as per usual, I'm a professional, don't you know? Yes, yeah, so I'm Nine Fingers. You probably would have seen me around as well every now and then, especially in CB Rivals. Um, yeah, I stream on Twitch as well. Don't do anything with YouTube. I'm on EU too. Best player, I heard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> at least with a disability, I can definitely play. <laughs> we can probably approach about that, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah and I just basically have a laugh all the time so let's hope we can have some laughs tonight i'd say yeah Certainly. yeah that's good um i'm just seeing that uh, the chat is saying we are unmuted which is true we were unmuted five minutes ago uh, but we turn it off the, the delay is five minutes uh, because we have to make sure all the games are played well the stream is not going um so that's all good um at least we got the delay going I'm, I'm really happy about that that's almost important for now um, yeah, I'm CB. I'm the tournament organizer for CB Rifles. Uh, later today, we will also have King Alpha TV together with Celgius casting game three and four from the third place match and also game one and two from the first place match final. And then Nine Fingers and Mark of Gee will take game three, four and five if, ne if necessary from the final. So look forward to those games as well um, as we get those casters later today into our, uh, our channels. Um, all right, guys. Let's let's just talk about for a little bit about the teams, at least. Um, what do you know about uh, Blame Elias and Eden? Well, st st I'm way more, uh, mainly know more about Eden personally because I play on EU one. Obviously, they're on yep. EU one side, so Eden are uh, one of the strongest kind of as a house in general on the on the server on EU one. Anyway, they're one of the the top dogs, pretty much in the top alliance, and so far it, it kind of shows for CB rivals as well recently. Um, they did start off quite quite a bit rocky to start with. They did uh, they did lose their first matchup, but it was against We Are Clowns, who have obviously went on to the finals. So I mean, it's not like they've lost against uh, a new up and coming team. Um, but they did lose that first game and then drew uh, their second game. But after that, being on a, a nice wee win streak recently, um, which is always a good a good thing to have. Obviously, in a tournament kind of style like this, mm -hmm. and it's got them to the position where they are to be playing Blame Elias in the third place playoffs. So yeah. it's going to be an interesting matchup. There's plenty of good players on that side uh, the second is your team captain and you've got things like uh well actually i don't even know if it's ghost x playing it actually this time around but there's a few few good players in there anyway that are uh, definitely ones to look out like llama sexy kebab and Nemeo, two two good players they've been mvps quite recently on quite a lot of their uh, battles as well so i'm um, definitely getting a, a good good go at it every single time to, mm -hmm. to show show them what they've got pretty much yeah absolutely all right nine fingers what about blame Elias? Uh, Blame Elias are also EU1, I believe, but I believe they're like a, a mashup, so it's just like a group of players that are on EU1 mainly that mm -hmm. um, are fighting together in a team. 
I'm pretty sure they've got a lot of players from the same. Is it Clowns Fiesta in it? Is the alliance? Clowns Fiesta's alliance. Oh. Yeah, that's yeah and I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure the majority of their players are from the same alliance. Um, and they've performed exceptionally well this tournament as well. So they were obviously second in their group. Uh, they tied their first match up, lost their third, and then from then on just won every match. And they possibly might not have the the best individual players but they definitely have one of the best team synergies that i've seen in the tournament so far mm -hmm. um so this this is gonna be a good matchup man it's gonna be it's gonna be good to see like i if i had to tip it though i've seen more <laughs> of the blame elias game so i'd have to say blame elias probably gonna win with yeah. my gut feeling yeah however eden have played very well as well so it's that is literally like mm -hmm. it, it's such a small difference from what i've seen so yeah totally i don't know We'll, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll <laughs> it's see, we'll definitely, definitely going to be a very well, but a very well thought out battle for this yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, especially yeah. the fact that there's multiple maps mm -hmm. as well. So is that just playing on the same map, one one battle each, they're getting a yeah, couple of goes sure. at each other. So yeah, it's yeah, going to be sure. interesting to see how it comes out. Yeah, yeah we'll get into the predictions later. Uh, we got a prediction on Discord out as well, so I'll, 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 <laughs> I'll let you know uh, what the score is later. Um, for those who are watching and haven't joined the Discord yet, uh, you can go to the Discord. It's in the links below this channel. Um, you can also rewatch all the games on YouTube, but make sure to do that after all the games are over for today because you don't want to miss any of it live. Um, <laughs> but on the CB Rivals Discord, you can go to predictions um, and still vote there if you want. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to seeing those numbers go up. Um, then let's go to We Are Clowns and Pondgard. They are in the big final. They are both undefeated. Uh, we Are Clowns are 17 games in a row undefeated since core tournament up till now. Pondgard only uh lost one like game out of a match which me meant that they had a tie which is technically still undefeated but they lost once against surf slayer um what do you two know about those teams obviously like you said pond guards na um we are clowns eu one i believe they're again <laughs> a, a big lineup from clown Mixed fiesta, clown um, fiesta. Yeah, pretty much. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i know that the the guys from from clowns are definitely very very competitive like even though they had the 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 first place position completely sealed on the last roundup. I was like trying to prod Temple Shop to do some maybe some stupid plays just for the locals and he was like, no no. <laughs> We're gonna whitewash it. So um they're they're definitely gonna take this seriously. So this is gonna you know, be a very good match. Yeah you very can good match. Definitely trust that. And you can all see Pondicard has been improving a lot. Uh, they they had to they had to struggle a lot with other tournaments because the timing wasn't right for them and Pine has talked about it yeah. uh, during the podcast as well. Now on Sundays they get to play in the afternoons. It's so much better for the for the NA players. So we can see them in their strongest form uh, today. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Like Pongard, Pongard, I, I played with. I used to play with a lot of the boys across on NA before I transferred over to EU one myself. So I know a lot of the players and uh, Pion obviously always seems to rack up the MVPs a lot of the times and just just dominates on the battlefield. He's a very good player. Um, even on these uh, on any server, you can see how well he plays in different houses and the, the, whatever he's done, um, and how he goes on to lead the, the team. Lots of knowledge and uh, obviously passes that down to the rest of the players on the mm -hmm. on the team. Is this so, yeah, Pion Pongard's be... main shot caller as well? Then uh, no, no, it's uh, I a few. no, it's not. No, yep. it's uh, Sick is calling some of it. I believe Maximus as well. The, they've got a couple of like that are shot calling, uh, but Pion okay. is more, he, he, he does most of the preparation, but he's not their main shot caller. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's good. All right, then we are clowns. Uh, Temple Shot. We had a great talk with him last week on the on the podcast. Um, he's very serious about the, their, this game. They are screaming three or four times a week, um, so they are really committed and they've been innovating a few strategies as well on uh, different maps. Um, what do we know about them? I will, I'll give it to you, Mark, <laughs> since nice thing started <laughs> with Paul the guard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nah, they uh, we are clowns. I've well, we kind of been battling with them pretty much uh, in in normal CB side of things, and the whole kicker bunch are just like something you gotta watch. But as soon as you see them in any kind of matchups, even just in normal sieges, if you see a five stack of kicker, you're, you're worried mm -hmm. the whole time. So I can imagine the guys from Pongard will know this, and they'll know exactly how strong these players are. Um, obviously, Amia, the dual blade, is. I don't even. I don't know how he does it. I literally don't know how a light hero class can do what he does and how well he does it. But Amia seems to pick up so many hero kills. Um, devastating on the battlefield. Duel, just literally sneaking, sneak out, get back in, and by the time you finish it, he's finishing off with like 13 kills and stuff in battles. And, it, and that's just massive. Like um, that makes a massive difference, <laughs> obviously, for stopping pushes and stuff and anything like that. Or even uh, when it comes to the CPL, for example, when they were doing. Uh, 
some of the matches we've obviously had in CB Rivals as well, where you can only use three deaths if you're dying three times you're out of the game. Um, but if you've got somebody like Amir picking up 13 hero kills, that's stopping so many people dying. You know, like that's getting so many chances and stopping so many pushes so quickly. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's a, his average is about eight per game as well, like eight kills a game overall. He's a sole rat tournament. Yeah. So that's incredibly yeah. impressive. Pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. yeah, pretty impressive. I mean, it's the guy with their most kills as well in the season so far, if I remember. I think CB put, uh, collected some things together. Yeah, 48, 48 hero kills so far in, yep. in the last, last league. At an average of 8 per game, which is just ridiculous. Yeah, that is ridiculous. And the highest was 13, so... Mm, but I'd, I have yeah. to throw a spanner in the works. We all, we all know it had to come. Having kicker in front of your name doesn't mean you're good. I'm talking to you, Fatal. <laughs> we all know you're terrible. Absolutely <laughs> worst player of you one. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, it is interesting, so though that now that you see so many players with uh, like a certain name before the actual game, a player name, um, you can change yeah. your name and instill some fear in, while you're playing sieges <laughs> in other players. Right? Yeah. And I put kicker in my name now. Then does that work? <laughs> you can try. <laughs> uh, who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might just roll over the enemy right away. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone just all like, falls out the game. Like no, no, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. That'd be that'd be good. All right. Um, let's oh. let's watch some actual gameplay and uh, see, see how those teams did. Um, do we want to start with um, uh, We Are Clowns or Podguard? It would kind of make sense to do Blame Elias or Eden, wouldn't um, it? Yeah, yeah. Match and then, yeah. Uh, one of those first. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and then talk if, we, if, we, if we've got time, we can watch them afterwards. If not, we can watch them between matches. Yeah, yeah, that would make sense, I guess, as well. All right. Um, I'll have to sw switch my screen share. It, oh, you can yeah, see it, right? Just yeah, 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 right, good. The um, stream is frozen. Uh, just a heads up, CB, your stream is actually frozen. Yeah, yeah, I'm, it's so I'm going to make a transition, uh, so you get it. Looks like, um, yeah. So here's the no, one I mean, going, on yeah, the actual one question. Yeah, we're going to go. Oh, okay, yeah, that's probably so. Yeah. All right, so here's the actual fight um, between Rose and Eden. This was on Sun City. You can see that uh, Rose had just uh, put up a, like a great flank and you can see how quickly Eden is actually able to adapt to it. It's pretty insane how coordinated they are on the fly. Um, you can also see that some of their attacks, they are really like used to fight on different flanks and um, very experienced players and they, it, it may look very messy and it is messy for sure, but uh, Eden is really good and, com and it's coming out in, on top in these kind of fights. So um, yeah, pretty interesting fight on this one. And Sunset is one of the maps that teams uh, I've already said that it's pretty hard to to defend. Um, so quite impressive. For yeah, them to, to do multiple like ways to come in and multiple mm -hmm. flanking areas and opportunities, especially for that these points. Um, like C point, for example, is massively yeah. open and yeah. trebable, and yeah, it's definitely big wide open. Definitely space a difficult position. Cav. Yep. Yeah. And, and back there, and the was still, were still how much OP. Like cab? <laughs> yeah. yeah, quite. Oh, wow. so. What do you mean they're, <laughs> still, they're not anymore? Wait, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so this was uh, Rose vs. Eden. It was a pretty good game. Um, if you haven't watched it, again, it's on YouTube. You can watch it there. Um, so feel free to go there. Um, and then we got uh, Blame Lies vs. Surslayer. This is the game that uh, Alias actually wanted to show us. Um, let me get it on the screen as well. I'll run the transition. The one across from it. Go. There were 18 just past that. So. Uh, Nine fingers. I believe you've costed this game, right? So I'll, I'll let you. Yeah, I, I costed this game. Yeah. Oh, this is where um... no Elias are attacking. Never mind. <laughs> Did they not get recharged here from Uruguay or something, or Uruguay mm -hmm. from Surf Slayers? Yeah, so they're attacking the the C point here, or the, the B point, which is almost never defended, right? B point, by most yeah. teams. Yeah. So this was already interesting yeah, from Surf and... Slayers. And Surf Slayers actually did really well on this push out because I, was, I think I was saying as well at the time when Blame Elise started moving towards the, the, the Surf Slayers on, on B, if they hadn't supported him, they would have just got completely wiped. Mm -hmm. And then, um, like, I remember Uruguay had an absolutely awesome charge from behind, and I'm pretty sure he was using Cataphracts. And then Elias stabilized it and then just, like, rushed the end point. And there was just no time for Surf Slayers to get back in, back in control, basically. And mm -hmm. I think it was basically GG from there. It was like a really quick turnaround from Uruguay doing work. So then blame Elias stabilizing and getting onto the end point. Yeah. And your replay's gone for me. I don't know if it's gone for you as well. Oh, uh, it's, it's still going. I don't know for sure. Yeah, at least on the stream it is. Yep. Um, let me double check the Discord then as well. Oh, yeah. yeah see I'm what just, you're I'm Discord, it's... Yep, it switched. Uh, let me get it back for you. 
There you go. There we go. Yeah, yeah that's better. <clears throat> All right. And then now you see Blaming Lee's basically putting the the pressure on the end point, and it was just Surf Slays just couldn't re recover in time, man. Um, mm. Obviously, once you get onto the end point as well, you can start, there it goes, the treb on the archway to just slow down and uh, ruin any reinforcements coming through. And it was, it was just so clinically done from Elias mm -hmm. that it's just, like, it's scary, man. Like, they, they work so well together as a team. And it's like, they're all, they've not got, like, an Amya that, like, massively stands out, but they all do exceptionally well. And, like, the team synergy from Elias is, is just really, really good. See, man. Their rotations are quick. When a decision gets made, when they like, they get told to push or whatever, it's just awesome. Uh, how they rotate through their their unit abilities and their 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 body slams from their short swords and stuff is just so well timed. Mm -hmm. um, another team that's been absolutely smashing scrims from what I've been told as well and from what I've heard. So it makes sense that they they've only improved over the season so far. Yep, totally. And uh, something that's very interesting actually is that uh, both Blame Lies and Pontecart wanted to show a fight from uh, their game against Surf Slayer, um, which I think also shows that Surf Slayer is a really good team because they, like fighting against them and winning against them means that you had a really good fight, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Surf Slayer's are very experienced side mm -hmm. when it comes to like tournaments and stuff and stuff. They've obviously like shown themselves quite well. So if you go into to play against them and pick up a win against them, then you definitely doing something great. Yep, yeah, absolutely true. Um, so let's talk just a little bit about the other teams that haven't made it to the finals, to the to the top two, basically from uh, from both divisions. For those who don't know, we had fifteen teams uh, fighting for um, the first two places to go to either the third place final or the first place final. Um, we had a pool A and a pool B. It ran for seven weeks, um, and it was concluded last week. And now we have the finals. Um, so in pool A, for example, I can actually bring up the schedule as well. Um, get the right one here. Here we go. Um, and we have pool A here. So Bond Guard, Blame Allies in pool A, and then Jack Ultras and Surf Slayers were the one that just got out of the, the first two places. And Chocolate Paladins was actually also in the fight for quite a long time to get into the top four. And top four will go to the top tier bracket, you could say, for next season. Um, they will all be fighting against the top four from the B pool as well. And the bottom four will go together into one pool. And we might even get a third pool because there are so many teams joining and you can actually still join as well. Um, so those are, those are the teams that Pontegard and Blame Lies have been fighting. And if we go I've to the... I've got a quick question. Yep. Yeah, 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 go ahead. When, when is the cutoff date then for new teams if they want to enter? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. So actually from the exact day up till now we have two more weeks for teams to uh, get into the team registration on the discord so, so may, may 14th may 14th okay. yeah. May 14th. Yeah, cool. yeah. Yeah. so if you want to join boys exactly get your players teams friends family whoever is in the game <laughs> or not in the game yet get them into the game form up a team and sign up <laughs> yeah it's just tons of fun like any team that has played in tournament e even if you lose and nine fingers and i can um, attribute to that, uh, we know that even when you lose, you can have a lot of fun in the in, in, in the tournaments, and you, you learn so much about the game. And, yeah. Are you just saying that? Are you just saying that because Nine Fingers joined the team then lost? <laughs> I was literally about to say I played one match right <laughs> in the end and vanished, like lost every single. It's clearly my fault. Come on, guys. Absolutely, clearly I'm there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At least you can say, well, I wasn't there at the other the game, so I can't. I was just about to say that, yeah, and yeah. you were like, oh no, it's not this fault. Yeah, yeah brilliant. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very oh, true. Man. Very true. All right, yeah, so, yeah, pretty interesting. Um, yeah, but you can see some teams lost all the games, like Try King, Blame and Lies, but I know even, uh, uh, not Blame and Lies, Banished, uh, but yeah, they had tons of fun. Um, anyway, on to, to Pool B. So we are Clowns and uh, Eden, obviously, from Pool B. Um, they have faced Rose, Slavs, um, and they were the other two top contenders for the first two places. Um, Slavs from EU2 is the only team from EU2 actually to make it to the top four, and Rose from EU1. Um, they were all fighting really hard for those final places in the last two weeks. It was very interesting to, to see as well. And then we have Love and Devotion, Sifos and Banished in the bottom. And they will be going to the, to the second pool next season. Um, Love and Devotion actually getting quite a few wins at the end. It was pretty, pretty nice. They could have even made it to the top four as well. Um, yeah, anything specific you want to say about those teams? 
I'm not going to say it's one-sided or anything, but EU1 is clearly dominating just mm. now and just, uh... <laughs> yeah, but it does, it's, it's true, because of the true. server population, no? Because, uh, obviously, the server population on EU1 is a lot stronger, and obviously, p players were transferred over here as well, so... Yeah, yeah. It does really... Kind of kind of aids towards the, the competition overall on the server mm -hmm. for EU1, but then also when it comes to putting in teams, there's an option, opportunity more for uh, EU1 teams. So it would be good to see Definitely. more NA teams yeah. and some more UT teams uh, get involved as well for uh, the next season of it but um, mm -hmm. yeah there's definitely teams in there that have only came into like a tournament style this season um, they, for doing this CB Rivals and like they may have, there may be teams that have went through complete loss streaks but their games have been getting better they've been progressing better they've, they've not been getting absolutely destroyed within like two, two minutes or something it's been progressively getting better they've been getting stronger and stronger as the, the games have come on and obviously the more experience you play in these kind of tournaments the better you're going to get so mm -hmm. Like it's never to even if you go into the bottom group um, for this next round, it's going to be a better chance for you guys now to progress your your main tactics because you'll be playing yeah. against people with similar levels, similar strategies, and people that aren't as experienced as the teams that were priorly playing. Like uh, coming up against we are clowns and surf slayers and stuff like that, and you just into your first tournament is always going to be a difficult thing. So yeah, uh, it's going to be definitely interesting the next time round. I think that's definitely. True. I think next next season is going to be overall better just because. The, the skill difference isn't going to be ridiculous anymore. There's obviously mm -hmm. going to be teams that will do better than others, but it's not like you get a Pom Guard in one dominate and then you get We Are Clowns in the other the other pool dominate, and they're going to be in the same match, like the same table. And the matches generally should just get a lot more fair, if you like. Well, not maybe yeah. not fair, but yeah. they're going to be more competitive. Yeah. Nobody wants to see. Nobody wants to be involved in a ruffle stomp because nobody learns from it. Um, the team that gets Ruffle Stomp basically just gets demoralized and more likely to get smashed the next week. The team that beats them didn't learn anything because they knew they were going to win anyway, basically. They didn't have to really try in a lot of cases. It's just like they go through the motions and then they've, they've, they've done nothing. It's not really interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gets a bit it's disheartening. It's to commentate point. after three minutes. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's like, and everyone just knows that the team's going to lose. Um, but that that'll, won't happen next season. Yeah. It'll be a lot, lot more even. Yeah. yeah. Good thing as well, though, do you because of this, a lot of players and a lot of teams have been actually asking for scrims and stuff mm -hmm. during like, yeah. the off time that they're playing and going like, can we play against some of you guys just to kind of practice as well? Yep. So it's not even just the tournament they're playing against each other, they're trying to practice and trying to get better out with the tournament and in, in the game and stuff themselves. So they're trying to pick up strategies and mm -hmm. pick up other routines and even getting help from other houses that are bigger and stronger than them um, just to try and help them kind of get better as it comes on like love and devotion it was definitely getting a lot of a uh, lot of fights put in and a lot of practice put in yeah, and sure. they, they end up getting a couple of wins in there mm -hmm. as well so yeah, yeah it's definitely it's definitely going to help for going forward yeah and that's something that i really like about the league um as it's going on like you said so many more teams are scrimming each other and it's not just tournament teams also teams that want to go in, into the tournament for next season i know they've even been asking around for teams to scrim against them to get practice going to get players used to like the, sc the scrimming the, 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 the playing the tournament and everything um so i feel like it just levels up the whole like conquerors blade scene basically for at least for all of those that want to play competitively um, and 15 v 15 is so 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 much different from your five man group in siege like it's it's insane how how, oh, how big of a difference it is yeah yeah you definitely definitely have to work a lot more and like listening to every single part that's going on yep yeah totally true all right um as we have uh, we should have four more minutes before um we should head into the games um the lobby is still going to be open up once the lobby is open uh, we will just show you the lobby as well um, so you can see the bands that are there as well. Um, just for information, the third place match will actually be um, first played on Reginopolis for the first two games, and we will have Eden attacking first, and then it will be followed. Hang on a sec there by Blame Elias uh, being the attacker. Um, as after that, we will have two games of Le Grand Gloire, the French map. And they will play it on game three and game four, and that will see King, uh, Zelgius casting those games. So Mark and Nine Fingers will rotate with Zelgius after the first two games. And then, if it's still a tie, so if both teams have won two games, then it will go to the field battle of Grasslands. Um, and on that map, it will actually be also be a, a maximum of three deaths. Same for the Grand Glar, because it's limited on the CBL rules. And for Reginopolis, we will have unlimited deaths, basically. 
So that's it for for, for those uh, for the maps and the bands are Falconetti and Flamers. For those that are interested, um, so no Falconetti, no Flamers in all five games. If we make it to five games, all right. If, if we should should be that close. Hopefully it is. It It'd is be nice to see. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So, since you are saying it might be five games, what is your prediction, uh, Mark? Let's go first with you. I I have a feeling that the defenders are going to defend twice on Regionopolis. So like there'll be a defense here. So there'll be one each after the first games of Regionopolis. Um, and then going into the Grand Rural, I can't even say the the map name, <laughs> but yeah, going like into the the new French war. map. <laughs> Blue R. Definitely can't see it as being Scottish. I can't do anything to do with ours and L's. <laughs> it's a bit of a nightmare. But um, yeah, it's it's going to be a difficult one because we've never really seen this map in a competitive stage. So like, or a competitive way, like it's it's completely different than what it is when you're playing your sieges. So it's it does seem like at first when we first the map first came out that it was very defense oriented. But now people have found ways around the map and how to get around the map. It might be a completely different story. So we'll we'll wait and see and. I don't even know how to call this one for the the next part, mm -hmm. but um, I, I I think it could go to a grasslands. Uh, All right. And then, off, and what do you think? What do you think will make it out on top? Eden or Blame Lies? I think Eden might steal it at the end. All right, so three two for <laughs> Eden with Mark Nine Fingers. What about you? I reckon Blame Elias win. All right, what's the score? What do you think? <laughs> three one. Three to one. Oof. Ooh, it's not going to <laughs> um, And then, do you that's think... Just, that's just pure gut feeling. Do I hope it goes to all five, but my gut says, nah. <laughs> all right, all right. And do you think they will, like, get it done on, on the Reginopolis or the Le Grand Um, Let me look at... Are they not doing twice Reginopolis and then twice yeah, exactly. one Grand Gloire? Yeah, so, well, it will be, so, so it'll be the last Grand the last yeah, yeah, exactly. They, they would have to win the last one. Okay, 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 good. Yeah. All right. So I reckon they'll lose their attack on Reg Reginopolis, though. All right. So on the Discord, we've got a pretty convincing vote. Sixty percent says Blame Elias, and forty percent says Eden for the third place match. Ooh, okay. That's Ooh. interesting, isn't it? Yeah. I'm, I like to I like to go against the curve. That's what right, I was there doing. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> good, 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 good. I think it's adding our percentage up a little bit. Yeah. I think we can all agree though, attacking Reganopolis without mortars to soften up C is gonna basically be impossible. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I just that's why I think well. it's gonna be a draw straight away from Reggie yeah. Reggie defense. Yeah. Because... yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Reginopolis is gonna be very interesting. Like you said, it's pretty defense favorite. Like on the glory, we have no idea yet. Uh, there might be some really good places to defend it, might also be just attack favorite because it's such an open map and has so many avenues. But we have yeah. no clue yet. We'll go dive into those games later. Um, Falco and Flames are banned as well. Yeah, true, true. So it makes things very interesting, very different. Um, I've got the lobby opened up in the stream. So everybody, you can see the bands, you can see the players. They're all in there. Uh, we actually have one player too many still. He'll be moved. There we go. So we have almost all of the stream is ready, I think. Yeah, looks like. We are all there, so at any given moment, uh, when the teams are ready, they will give the go signal and we'll start the game. Um, I'll be muting the mic, I'll be controlling the camera, and Nine Fingers and Mark, you can take it over from there. Um, and then I hope you all enjoy the games, we'll have some good ones. Uh, and that's it for now, and we'll see you after the games. After each game, we'll of course talk about it for a couple of minutes before we go into the next, and we'll see what happens. It's